Welcome to Epsona's Quick Start series, where we get you up and running on Epsona's various tools. This series is designed so that you can follow along with the video, taking the steps that you see on screen. You can pause the video as you need to take the various steps. And by the end of the video, you should have a product of your own. At various times, I will refer to links and I'll make sure that those links end up in the description. Today, we're going to be talking about our document and email merge tool, specifically within the context of the nonprofit cloud. Our use case today will be building a year-end tax receipt with the nonprofit cloud data model. Furthermore, you can download our starter pack, which will include sample Epsona items that are cloud specific. You can go to epsona.com slash quick starts to get started. Here you'll find various clouds that you can click on. If we click on nonprofit cloud, this is a work in progress, but currently we have our document and email merge example, which you'll see in this video. You can click here for the video and click here to download the starter pack. Within this starter pack, there will be a variety of reports, filters, a template and a merge action that you can use as a starting point as you build your own solution. At the end of this video, we'll show you details of how to download and import this starter pack. Our document and email merge tool requires three major components, a template, a data source, and the merge action itself. When we combine the template and the data source through our merge action, the output is a completed merge document. Today's use case is going to be a year-end tax receipt. Our goal is to produce one letter per household, and within that letter, we want to include all of the household's one donations from last year. Let's start with the template. Here we have a basic template for year-end tax receiving. We need to merge in certain household details, and we need to merge in a list of gifts from last year. This template will be in the downloadable starter pack, but I'll show you a couple tips about how to add merge fields. You'll note that we're missing the zip code field here, which we want to add. The simplest way to add a merge field to a template is through our Word macro. When you apply this macro to your Microsoft Word application, you simply type the word that you want to become a merge field, highlight it, and click this icon and you're done. It's now a merge field. To confirm that you've built this merge field in the appropriate way, you can right click on it and you should see an option to toggle field codes. Click on that and it'll open up the merge field and show that the label on the inside, zip, is the same as the label on the outside. That's a healthy merge field. If you're not able to apply the macro, you can take the typical steps that Word suggests to create a merge field. You would do this by going to insert. If you're in Windows, you'll see quick parts. I'm in a Mac, so I see this field icon. Once you click on quick parts, if you're in Windows, you'll then see a sublist with the field option. You click on that, go to mail merge, merge field. In Windows, you'll just have a blank field to enter your value into. Here we see this merge field, but you can leave that. And we would type in the word that we want to turn into a merge field and hit OK. There we go. To learn more about this macro, I'll include the link to this page in the description. Another important detail about year-end tax receipts is that while you want one letter per household, you need multiple gifts to stack up in this table to depict all of the donations from last year. To do this, you'll use what Epsona calls sublists. This is essentially a table where you use a particular syntax within your merge fields to tell Epsona that you're creating a list of records from a second data source. Here you can see the syntax required for these merge fields. First, we add table start, colon, and then you name your table. It could be named anything you want. I'm using GIFs. Then you enter the merge fields that you want to include, and then you close the table out simply by adding table end. Okay, this template's done. Let's go ahead and save it. Now let's add it to Epsona. In Epsona, templates are stored as documents. You'll want to make sure that documents are listed on your menu bar. If not, you'll want to change your Epsona configuration to include it. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. Go to the Documents tab, click Upload, choose the file that you just saved, add it to whatever folder makes sense to you, and it's added. I can click on Last Modified to make sure that I see it at the top of my list. If you ever need to edit this template down the road, you can always click Replace to upload the most current version of the template. Okay, our template's done. Let's move on to the next component, our data source. Here we have an entity relationship diagram or an ERD of the fundraising portion of Nonprofit Cloud. Gift transaction is our core object that represents the donations. They are typically related to accounts, but specifically to person accounts that represent people in your database or donors. 
And the account contact relationship object is a junction object that relates the various contacts in your database to their households. This is a complex drawing, so I've simplified it with a slide. In this slide, I've pulled out just the relevant objects from the larger ERD. In the nonprofit cloud data model, households are represented by accounts. Contacts are also represented by accounts, but specifically the record type person account. Donations are represented by gift transactions. Gift transactions are related to person accounts through the donor lookup. Contacts are then householded under the household account via the object account contact relationship. We'll dive deeper into this as we go. For Epsona to merge a household letter with multiple gifts, it needs to use this sublist data model that I referenced during the template de demonstration. This requires two different data sources. One data source that shows the accounts for which we will be making the annual gift receipts for, and one report that shows the gifts within each account. You'll note that in this top level report, we want to see one row per account. This is because Epsona will always create one document output for every row in the source report. The secondary report that houses the specific transactions is where we want to see one row per transaction. And you'll note here that there are multiple rows per account, each housing one transaction. This can be tricky in the nonprofit cloud data model, so we'll break it down further. Our top level report needs to show one row per account. To do this, we're going to use the account contact relationship plus some filtering to display only the households that have gifts from last year. In the sublist report, we want to show one row for every gift designation. That means that if one gift is split between two funds, we want to see two rows for that gift. To accomplish this, we're going to use a variety of nested filters that will apply both to the sublist report and the topless report. This diagram will make more sense once we dive in. All right, let's jump in. The first thing we need to do is create some filters. We're going to start with gift transaction. For our use case, we want to identify gifts that were won last year. We'll do this by going to the gift transaction object and creating a new filter. First, we want to say that the current amount is greater than zero. Next, we want to make sure that these gifts were closed last year. We'll look for transaction completion date and make sure that it equals last year. Lastly, we want to make sure that these gift transactions were paid. Let's save this filter as gifts one last year. You can always find saved filters by going to tools and filters. Here we go. We just created a filter on the gift transactions object. Now we're going to create a filter on the account object saying that it has to be a person account and that they have to have gifts from the previous filter. We'll say that the account record type must be person account. and that the account has gift transactions whose ID would show up in the filter that we just created, gifts one last year for at least one record. Let's save this as person account with gifts last year. We've created our second filter. Lastly, we're gonna create a filter on the contact object. This might not make much sense now, but it will as we continue. One of the small technical nuances about the account contact relationship is that it links the household account to the contact record of our donors. Those contact records then look up to the person account. This filter will help us ensure that all of the accounts in the top level and all of the gifts in the sublist level are from the same group. This filter will be fairly simple. We just want to say that the account ID for this contact is in the filter that we just created, person accounts with gifts last year. Let's save this as contacts with gifts last year. All right, we have our three nested filters. Let's build our data sources. We'll go to our multi-step reporting tool and create a new report. Let's call it NPC Quick Start Top Level Report. You might be tempted to start this report at the account level, but we're actually going to start it at the account contact relationship object. 
The reason is we need to filter this report to only show us the households that have gifts from last year. We can do this by calling upon the contact filter that we just saved. But we will retrieve the fields that we need from the account object. Let's pull in all the fields that we need for our template. As a reminder, these are the fields that we need. We'll also need the account ID for these households. We can get that by going back to our target object, the account contact relationship, and clicking on the account lookup field. In Epsona, all lookup fields have a link icon. All record IDs have a key icon. The reason that we need to start at this contact account relationship is because by doing so, we get access to the contact object where we've saved our filter, and we get access to the household object where we get our fields. All right, let's save and run this report to see what we get. Some of these test accounts are missing address information, but the report has pulled in the correct records. Now let's create our sublist report. We'll start at the same account contact relationship object. The second step will be the gift transaction object. And the third step will be the gift transaction designation object. We'll go back to multi-step reporting. We'll click, click a new report and we'll name it NPC Quick Start Sublist Level Report. Let's start at the account contact relationship. We'll pull in the account name for reference. Next, we want the household ID. This is through the account lookup field on the account contact relationship. But this name is confusing, so let's rename this as household ID. Next, we need the household account ID from the contact that this account contact relationship looks up to. We can get that by going to the contact object and clicking on the account lookup for that contact. But this needs to be renamed to the person account ID. We need this ID to link the next step, gift transactions. We also want to apply the same filter that we applied to the last report. All right, let's build our gift transaction step. We need to link this step to the previous step, so let's get the account ID. That's found through the donor lookup. Let's rename this to be a little bit more clear. Now let's get the data that we need to merge into the template. As a reminder, we need a close date, a fund, and an amount. We also need the ID field so we can link the next step. Now, even though we filtered the previous step based on our saved filter, this step is its own query, and we need to filter it as well. This last step will be on the gift transaction designation object, but we'll keep it simple and call it gift designation. We'll pull in gift designation name to fill into the fund field. We need the lookup field to the gift transaction so that we can link it to the previous step. And this is where we'll pull in the amount field because every designation has its own amount. Now let's link our steps together. Go to the linkage tab. Epsona will give you every possible combination to match to. We want to match this step to the step above. So we want the gift transaction ID from the previous step to match the lookup field to the gift transaction in this step. Now let's link the second step to the first step. Since gift transactions are linked directly to the person accounts, we want to make sure that the person account ID from the first step matches the lookup to the person account in this step. All right, let's save and run this. So now we're seeing each household with all of the gifts that are underneath that household. One important piece of information is missing. As I mentioned before, we need a common ID between each data source so that when we are building our merge action, we can link them together. 
that's going to be the household account ID. And though we have that ID here, we need it to be represented on every row of the transaction so that when we link the two data sources together, it can take each row representing each transaction's designation and link it to the same household. To do this, we'll go back to edit and click autofill previous step data. Now the household ID populates on every row. All right, we're ready to create our merge action. We always build merge actions from the top level report. So let's go back to that report. Click merge mail, and we'll create a new merge action. For our purpose, we're creating a document. Let's choose our template that we previously uploaded. We want one single file with multiple pages. Now it's time to map our fields. You'll note that there's two sections. The main top level field section will apply to our top level report. In our example here, the top level fields will come from the top level report. We can always get today's date from our system field section. Now it's time to merge our sublist. Remember that this comes from a different data source. We'll go down to the multi-step report section and choose our sublist report. Now we're mapping the fields from our sublist report into the merge fields of the sublist. Now it's time to link the two data sources together. We want the account contact relationships account ID from the top level report to match the account contact relationship account ID from the sublist report. Let's run it and see what we get. Great, we're seeing account names merged in with gifts from last year. Let's find an example that has multiple gifts. Here's an example that's missing the address, but all the gifts are present. Congratulations, you created a variety of nested filters. You created a top and sublist level report that spans many objects and links them together through the account contact relationship and you created a single document with multiple pages, each showing a single household with multiple gifts from last year. We encourage you to continue checking out Epsona's support resources, like our YouTube channel, our LinkedIn page, and our weekly support hours held three times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Stick around to learn how to download our starter pack that includes all of these reports, the template, the filters, and the merge action. Thanks for watching. This webpage will provide a download link and a description of what you'll get. After downloading the package, visit the Epsona tab in your org, go to the Settings menu, and click on Epsona Items. Once there, click on Tools, and then Import Items. Choose the file you just downloaded, and you're done! You'll be able to explore our pre-built solutions and use them as examples while building your own. Thanks for watching!